Pacastero, multimedia reporter in the Visayas, and I'm here with um, Visayas correspondent Lorraine Ikarma. And um, the, uh, behind us, the uh, rally of gubernatorial candidate uh, Ace Durano and uh, vice gubernatorial re-electionist Junjun Davide has um, just wrapped up. And this is the rally that Vice President Lenny Robredo was supposed to attend, um, but she ended up canceling uh, last minute uh, due to the party of Isidorano, um, the PPP party, uh, supporting another presidential bet, uh, Bongbong Marcos. Uh, Lorraine was able to join um, an ambush interview on the sidelines with, uh, with Dorano, and he uh, gave mo a more detailed explanation of why the vice president's uh, visit did not push through. Can you um, talk a little bit about what Dorano uh, explained? Um, so basically, uh, while we were interviewing Durano, he explained that there was no, um, uh, they did not uninvite the vice president from attending here. In fact, he re he's repeated multiple times that Robredo was still welcome to grace the rally, that they were still very grateful that she amplified their um, priority programs during her Siboom rally uh, last April 21. Um, he narrated that um, his party, PPP, um, initially did not have um, a presidential bet. Um, they never agreed to a presidential endorsement until last weekend. And when he arrived back in Cebu from being in an island barangay here in Cebu province, he was visited by um, one of the chairmen, so, uh, by the chairman of PPP, and that he was informed of the party's decision to endorse um, presidential candidate and dictator son Bongbong Marcos Jr. But what the, what this means in terms of um, Durano's official presidential endorsement is unclear. Um, he continues to push the line that his candidacy and um, Vice Mayor Junjun Davides candidacy isn't about. Get, um, they were never Vice asked, Governor. Vice Governor Junjun Davides um, candidacy. Um, they never aspired to get national endorsement. All they were pushing for was the Cebu priority development agenda. And that was, that was what he basically continued to echo throughout the entire interview. And that um, when we asked him if um, he would have endorsed VP Lenny had her team decided to continue to push through because according to him, um, what the only thing that they did was um, tell the Robredo camp of um, the decision of PPP to endorse um, Marcos Jr. And after this, uh, this sort of this is sort of where the hesitation from the camp of um, VP Lenny reportedly began until finally they decided to withdraw. So that was what we got from our short interview with um, uh, gubernatorial candidate Durano that um, they did not uninvite. Um, VP Robredo. Can you hold this for a second? Because I realized I did not have my mask on and we still have a pandemic. My apologies. Um, sorry about that. And um, speaking of pandemic, so uh, the the rally went on as normal um, and it, it was really focused on the local, local issues this time. And one of the local issues was the pandemic response of the provincial government. Um, uh, Junjun Davide mentioned uh, about uh, issues about outsourcing health workers during the time. I know you, you were covering um, this uh, this issue during the pandemic. Can you explain uh, uh, what was the issue with the health workers were uh, being, I think, outsourced? Um, I it was one of the initial steps taken by the Garcia administration in Cebu was actually to outsource um, some medical personnel um, from um, agencies instead of hiring directly um, by the capital. So um, she justified this as a cost-cutting measure and as a means to assure that um, there would be quality medical workers in the province instead of just because there were accusations that the previous administration, which, which was the Magpale Davide administration, were just, giving, were just hiring medical personnel as favors to their supporters. So supposedly, the outsourcing um, method um, proposed and acted on um, by the Garcia administration during the first 
um, the first few months of her term actually um, was in order to um, remedy this sort of. Um, so that that is one of the um, platforms that the Durano the VD camp is currently pushing for um, for better health care in response to that um, move by Garcia during the earlier parts of her term. Yeah, and um, I remember um, when. When Dorano initially filed his certificate of candidacy, you know, the pandemic response was his first reason of why he filed. And uh, coming out of the, the private sector or after not holding a public office for six years, he mentioned it again here tonight that, uh, that Vice Governor David they planned on retiring. He could have stayed in the private sector but decided to run because he believes in pushing for um, like you said, better health care, housing, uh, education, and other projects he sees uh, are being neglected in the province. And uh, one of it, their platforms are, are written on a document called the Cebu Priority Development Agenda. And this is one of the documents that was mentioned by Vice President mm -hmm. Lenny Robredo in her um, Mandawi Grand Rally last Thursday and said that she was on, uh, on board with this. Um, so what was, uh, going back to the press con, um, what did he say about the CPDA and, um, and uh, is, is he, does he still have communication with the Robredo camp? Are they still, despite the non-endorsement, uh, are they still going to work together to promote this um, platform that they have? He did not specifically mention, the, the, as um, for his statement, um, he does not know what happened. Um, uh, all he knows is he in, his team in, informed the Robredo camp or the vice president's camp of the PPP's decision to endorse Marcos Jr. And um, eventually they backed out or they withdrew um, from being present in this event. However, um, what he continually echoed was um, he was thankful that the vice president was in line or was favorable to the Cebu Priority Development Agenda, which is which was um, a compen which is a compendium of priority programs by the Durano Davide administration after consultations with I believe it's 300 sectors here in Cebu. So he mentioned, yeah, as you said, he specifically mentioned um, how he's thankful that Lenny Robredo, a uh, Vice President Lenny Robredo, uh, mentioned this during her speech in the Cebu rally, um, and um, actually instead. Like in lieu of endorsing a candidate, it seems as if um, he's trying to say that every any candidate who supports the Cebu um, uh, Cebu Priority Development Agenda is very welcome to work with them. What's important right now is not um, a specific endorsement from a certain candidate, but everyone who is willing to make um, this agenda materialize is very much welcome to work with Durano. And I think he's also repeatedly said that um, during his speech um, at the end of the program. And I, uh, I, I mentioned earlier in our pre-event uh, live recap na um, si Vice President Robredo po, bisan pang nag-alliance man siya with different, uh, nakig-alliance sa, sa mga lain-lain nga political dynasties uh, around the country. She, she also emphasized that she didn't want these alliances to be transactional. So it will be interesting to see how this, uh, even if there is no endorsement, if there will be a continuation of discussion on the Cebu Priority Development Agenda. Because she did say uh, specifically that she, that she was on board with all, all of the items. Um, and uh, I, this actually, uh, this school writer, St. Scholasticas in Talisay, is uh, one of the first places Vice President Robredo visited on her first campaign um, stop here in Cebu. Uh, she visited the southern parts of Cebu province uh, here in Talisay. She visited um, a fishing community um, in Tanque before going to different rallies in Argao and Toledo before her first rally in Cebu. Um, the, uh, Durano, excuse me, uh, I, one of the things that I noticed that he was mentioning here tonight was acknowledging the supporters of the different presidential yes. candidates. Uh, he, he pulled out um, a Lenny Robredo supporter and thanked her for being there. He said that all callers were welcome here. So I think it was, it's been very consistent of him not to be specific about which he, uh, candidate he supports. He has not been 
uh, quote unquote diehard about any specific mm -hmm. candidate as long as they uh, are willing to work with his priority agenda. Uh, is this is this um, on the other side on the the Garcia one Cebu side? Um, how have they been? Um, you know, uh, uh, what is their interactions like with their vet? Um, uh, Ferdinand Marcos Jr. and of course Vice President Sara Duterte. What um, do you have any insights? Um, uh, the Marcos um, Duterte tandem has frequently visited um, Garcia's um, daughter, um, which is a, uh, her, which is the spokesperson for um, Vice Presidential candidate um, Sara Duterte. Um, they've had multiple meetings and um, they've attended many events um, organized by. Um, Gwen, uh, Governor Gwen Garcia, and it was basically just between him and uh, between the unit team um, tandem or um, Isco, uh, uh, presidential candidate Isco. Um, they were just um, go, uh, everyone was waiting for um, one Cebu to finally um, decide between the two who um, they will be supporting. But as for the relationship of the Marcos Duterte tandem. With the Garcias, they've been very close. Even before um, the start of the campaign period, um, there were visits from both candidates, um, even before um, election season. And even um, Garcia, uh, Governor Gwen Garcia's daughter, um, Christina Frasco, has shared um, a very intimate friendship with the uh, president's daughter. So um, it was a lot, an alliance that was bound to happen. And... Um... Even even Durano, when he speaks about um, his party endorsing uh, Bongbong Marcos, it's not he he hardly uses the first person. No, it's always mm -hmm. my party is supporting this candidate. In fact, in one of in one of uh, at some point in the interview, he said, um, "Robredo is welcome. This is not a PPP event." He said, "This is a multi-sectoral event. Anyone who supports again the agenda, um, uh, the Cebu." The, Priority development agenda is welcome. So he's, he said that actually to media. Na, um, it was not a PPP event. Therefore, they are not barring any presidential candidate who wish to support the agenda and who wish to work with uh, the two of them. And tonight we saw uh, different sectors join the uh, uh, gov uh, gov uh, gubernatorial vet and vice governor uh, re-electionist Junjun Davide. Um, we, we saw youth now. There were... Uh, agricultural workers, um, different sectors who were also making a push for the CPDA. It was actually um, the members of these sectors. Um, they, they were saying earlier that um, the people who went up on stage were um, members of the groups consulted by Durano and Davide um, during the forging of the um, C CPDA. So um, the people who they consulted were the ones who welcomed them on, and were the ones who introduced them on stage. So that was, um, I believe, the most powerful moment in the entire uh, campaign rally, being introduced by the people who they consulted over the past couple of months, even before they decided to run um, for office. Yeah, I think that was the most um, interesting thing for me who covered a couple of local elections before, which tend to be very personality-based, very... Uh, um, it, they're they're very uh, based on who these people like. They connect as individuals with with their community, um, and not all they don't always speak about uh, issues. This surprise uh, this event was surprisingly very issue based. Less about um, them as personalities, about uh, what they've done. I think um, because I think it's probably also strategic because what can Dorana talk about what he's done over the past six years when he's been. Uh, he's been pretty out of out of the spotlight. Uh, so very I, private. Very private. So uh, I, it, on one hand, it's refreshing. Um, on the other hand, I don't know how it will be received by the voters who tend to be also appreciate a personal um, connection. Although he did go around and hug almost all of his supporters at one point in the night. And also, you still have that very traditional local sorty atmosphere. Uh, it doesn't have the probably entertainment value as we've as we've seen in the Robredo campaigns uh, campaign sorties, which have very like music festival uh, like um, 
you know, uh, uh, performers attended by big stars. We had Ria Ataide, uh, ABS, uh, who was an ABS event artist, uh, actor before, and um, AJ Dorano, who has become a social media influencer of some sort over the past couple of months. So I think that's the most entertainment we saw in some dancers. Uh, and so uh, it, it's uh, very, very typical of what you would see in local campaign sorties. But pulling out a bit more to, um, you know, the uh, as we head into the last stretch of this election, uh, we always say, repeat again, that Cebu is the most vote-rich province in the Philippines, and there is a lot at stake. According to a lot of internal surveys, there are a high number of undecided voters, and according to a lot of, uh, to several studies, that people make their decision for president in the last couple of days before the election. So, um, it, uh, even if uh, Vice President Robredo wasn't here, her name was mentioned a few times. We still saw, we still saw posters outside. I did not see any. Um, there was even a cake, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, we've noticed that there was a pink cake um, in the in the backstage. So we asked uh, the staff, and they explained that it was for VP Robredo if she decided to show up. So there was a cake um, which says VP Lenny Robredo, and they were supposed to present it to her if she attended today's rally. Yeah, and I saw in in the audience uh, was former Chief Justice. Uh, Hilary Devede, who is the father of the guys, vice governor, and Cebu City mayoral candidate Bimbo Fernandez, who have been longtime allies of Robredo. So uh, even if uh, the, the sortie wasn't jam-packed as usual, we saw uh, her supporters still show up. Uh, and uh, uh, East Durano support base also includes uh, supporters from Bongbong Mark, Sarah Duterte side. I did not see so much of them tonight, but... Um, I wonder how much of a factor that is when it came to the decision making uh, of of um, sticking with uh, PPP's uh, endorse, uh, endorsement of of Bongbong Marcos. Um, for you, uh, we have a couple of of days left to go before the election. Um, what are you you expecting as in terms of um, what's going to happen here in the local uh, in the lo in Cebu? Well. Um, uh Gubernatorial candidate um, Ace Durano did say that they will continue to um, it's not uh, it, it, they will continue to fight to retain votes and they will continue to push until the last stretch of the election. So um, I am expecting just more of the campaign sorties from both the Durano and the Garcia camps. And um, are there any more local um, uh, national candidates scheduled to um, grace Cebu or? Usually, uh, it seems like the national candidates have uh, prioritized the smaller provinces first. I noticed that they've been coming here more frequently. Isco Moreno was here. Uh, uh, Manila Mayor Isco Moreno was here last week. Um, I know Pacquiao is scheduled. Uh, Manny Pacquiao, uh, Senator Manny Pacquiao, is scheduled to return uh, next week. Um, but the, the schedules of these candidates tend to be very fluid. And... Um, it's going to be interesting to see how things, I think, for me, play out in the fifth district, um, given the, you know, the rivalries between um, the Durano Bakot Party and the Garcia family. Who, um, for the fifth district seat, we have Duke, uh, Duke Frasco, Congressman Duke Frasco, running for re-election, and uh, Duran, Red Durano, who is challenging him again for the seat, which he lost in 2019. Yeah, but the electoral protest is still um, pending in the. A threat. So, um, if we recall, um, Durano lost to Frasco and he filed an electoral protest um, against Frasco. So, it's still pending. There's still no um, communication as to the decision, the final decision of the electoral protest filed by Durano. And the 5th District has about 360,000 votes. Uh, we mentioned earlier that the uh, Vice President Lenny Robredo held a, a campaign rally in, in Danao at, at uh, the City Hall grounds before she went on to her grand rally in Mandawi City later on. Lorraine mentioned earlier, too, that that's significant because uh, it's difficult to get the blessing of the Durano family um, to hold an event, especially in on City Hall grounds. Um, another interesting uh, district to watch, I think, is the third district, where when uh, Governor Gwen Garcia's brother and incumbent congressman DJ Garcia is supporting Isco Moreno. Uh, he has, I think, a, a, from what I've seen so far, a, a command of his local government leaders. 
and going against her, his sister's um, choice for, for president. president. Um, it, I, I wonder how the, the votes here in Cebu will be split up this time. There are about uh, 330,000 votes in that district. And not uh, some of the mayors I've seen have made statements that they're not, even if they are with one Cebu, are not necessarily supporting the candidacy of Bongo Marcos. Although a lot of the mayors do seem to be behind the um, candid the candidacy of Sara Duterte, Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte, for vice president. And another, uh, we're seeing small town mayors come out to support uh, Vice President Lenny Robredo. Mm -hmm. Last week, uh, San Remigio Mayor Mar Martinez came out to support Vice President Robredo and Mayor Gungungika in the 7th District, I believe, of, and the Mayor of Dumanhog, which is the the hometown of the Garcia dynasty. So usually, uh, I, I remember in 2016, there uh, the when President Duterte ran, the uh, local local chief executive endorsements were slow to come out. Mm -hmm. But once the mayor started endorsing, I remember it was Mayor Adelino Setoy and uh, the late mayor, uh, sorry, yeah, the late mayor Setoy of Cordova who came out first for Duterte, which at the time Cebu province was a uh, majority part of the then ruling party, Liberal Party. Uh, and by the end of the election, almost all of the local uh, chief, chief executives were supporting Duterte. Uh, I don't I haven't seen it snowball yet, but um, we still have a couple uh, a couple of days to go, so you never know how that's going to go. Um, and it, it's go it's I think Cebu is uh, a very important province for anyone who's running for president. I think they all know this, mm -hmm. so it's go. Uh, I wonder how that they'll make tweaks in their strategy, uh, how they will try to appeal to Cebuano voters who tend to be very region. Um, I guess you can say regionalistic in their concerns. So there are a lot of issues I think that still need to be addressed um, here in Cebu, uh, where the province is still recovering from Typhoon Odette, um, which devastated much of the central Visayas. Um, and uh, I think how well they connect, how well they know the issues is going to be crucial. Um, it, also, um, I, know, I know we tend to talk about elections in terms of, you know, alliances and transactional matters, but um, I think it's not, we should not also discount the agency of a lot of the voters here in Cebu who um, vote out of choice. And that's not to say on the unity team side that they're not um, voting out of agency. On all sides, there, there are genuine supporters and a lot of people that still need to be convinced. Um, is there anything else? Um, that's pretty much it, Ryan. So, uh, yeah, we'll continue covering the local campaigns here in Cebu. Stay tuned to our coverage. Our hashtags are we decide, hashtag PHVote. Uh, once again, I'm Ryan Makasero, and this is Lorraine Karma. Thank you for watching Rap the Week.